I've been following the Millennium Prize since its very inception. Um, MIT's former president, Chuck Vest, was one of its earliest promoters in the United States. And at Technology Review, we have always thought it was unique. The Millennium Prize is awarded every two years, a prize of a million dollars for innovations in technology that have a profound societal change or force a profound societal change. There's a secondary goal as well, that it should reduce the fear of technological change amongst decision makers in government and business. And they have had a exemplary record in Finland in choosing technologies that meet those goals. Uh, in the first year, they awarded it to Sir Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web, and two years ago, it was awarded to Shuji Nakamura, who has invented a super-efficient form of light that could illuminate the poor and developing world with limited pollution. Well, of the three American winners, the Finns have once again chosen to award a wide range of, of innovations from a whole, a whole bunch of areas. Um, there have been awards to folks who have um, worked on forensic science. Uh, here in the States, the most famous is probably Bob Langer, a uh, chemical scientist at MIT who is responsible for more than 1,000 patents um, and a host of papers which have drawn together the engineering um, of medicine with biochemistry, so which before Bob Langer wasn't really united at all. The um, other interesting award is for something that most people are hardly aware of, which is the mechanism by which optical networks are, are powered so they don't degrade between stations. So the entire modern technological civilization is based upon a substrate of optical networks. But as information moves from one optical relay to another, it degrades through a process called, called latency. We would not have a modern optical network. In, in fact, we would not have a modern internet supporting video and audio at all if it had not been for the innovation which amplifies the optical relays between its posts. And finally, um, we've given, an, in, they've selected a interesting nominee in the gentleman who created CDMA, which is the better uh, and the more useful of the uh, wireless mobile standards. Um, at the moment, we're largely dependent upon GSM, which is, is fine, but has extreme limitations. And if mobile networks are to truly support mobile commuting, computing, it's going to be based on a technology like CDMA.